Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Um, for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Bala. I'm a cloud solutions architect with Microsoft. Uh, most of my day job is working on a lot of big data and especially AI machine learning applications. Currently, it has been more on that open AI, um, open AI space. Um, um, just to start, I'll give you guys some introduction on what, what AI and where we are. Uh, AI is really, uh, it's not really new. It has been in the industry for a long time. So AI uh, started in 1956. At that time, it wasn't that great. There were not many uh, um, industry involvement or there was no research going on like crazy. But in 1997, that time is when the algorithm starts uh, becoming much more easier. Uh, and this is where the machine learning uh, era started happening. Uh, that ten, that led into the deep learning world. Uh, the deep learning actually has made uh, possible of all these transformers uh, that we are talking about. And it also allowed us to work on images, audio, and a few other uh, uh, data sets. Um, machine learning is very good at um, te text, text, uh, text data sets like Skykit-Learn and things like that. But deep learning took it to the next level. But that that's just, it's, it's already in whole history, right? Uh, so what is new is this generative AI space. Uh, this is very exciting because we used to build a per task, per model type thing, but now the model is becoming very creative in creating uh, content. And it, it's, 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 a, it's a language model. Uh, we'll talk about it. Um, so this slide basically talks to you about what has changed. Uh, individually, we used to do uh, each model, uh, we'll take each task and we'll do one model at a time. And then, then there could be like, after that, you can programmatically pick and choose different models and do a lot of things. That changed. Um, what we do is we take a large volume of the corpus and convert, it could be text, video, images, whatnot, and then take that into and build a transformer model, which is called the foundation model. What it capabilities are is like it can do multiple tasks just from one model so these large language model uh, can do question and answering you can do sentiment analysis it can extract information um, we'll see in a demo um, uh, be uh, just just giving you some heads up the demo will be a little bit slower because we are getting throttle uh, because our demand is super huge um, and then we have uh, object recognition coming in you can also instruct there are a few uh, prompt, uh, prompt engineering, you can do a few short learnings to tell the model what you need. Uh, code generation is uh, another thing. And we'll talk about all the different models that is available in uh, our platform. Here is the new thing that you would have heard. Uh, you would have heard ChatGPT, you would have heard about um, uh, Copilot, VivaSail, even this is actually old now. We have Security Copilot, we have M365 Copilot, we have Power Platform Copilot. All of these are not going to replace a human, so please don't take it in that aspect. Uh, our AI technology is purely, purely designed um, to use uh, argument human. So uh, AI actually helps me put things together. If I don't understand, I go to a search engine. Now I go to my co-pilot to ask the question. It actually explains to me. So that is how we are looking at, and of course, uh, you will see a demo of the uh, Bing Chat GPT also. Um, and let's talk about what Microsoft is doing with OpenAI and their partnership. So OpenAI by itself is a separate company and they are in the, uh, their goal is to build um, large language models. Uh, we call it multimodal. Uh, it, as far as right now, it is text uh, is available, but there is a version. Um, you can also do uh, images, you can pass in images and ask it to, extract information out of it. Now, that is going to come in future. So the ones that we have right now are called multimodal because it can do multiple tasks within the language model just with one uh, one, one model. Um, we'll see that in the later steps. Now, what we did is we also gave them, uh, we invested on um, OpenAI to run their uh, OpenAI, I mean, the new models training for GPT and stuff like that. We built in a supercomputer, AI supercomputer, which they they are using it for training the entire model. Now, the the commercial model for OpenAI also runs in Azure. Um, but what we are doing is we are taking their model as is. Um, we are not going to uh, retrain the model and things like that. 
we are making it in a making it available for our customers and as you know microsoft runs on security which means uh, we put a lot of effort on data privacy data security uh, and we'll talk about that slide as well now what came out of it is all these models so you have gpt3 3.5 uh, 3.5 is also called ChatGPT. We have it as 3.5 Turbo and GPT-4 is ChatGPT. Um, we have Codex model, which is uh, if you have uh, if you have, if you have seen GitHub Copilot, we have been using this for a while now. Um, Copi GitHub Copilot is basically like our um, um, uh, so the engine that actually creates from natural language to uh, code. And then Dali is the image creations and we'll look at that, uh, how it is doing. I'll show you guys a sample as well. Uh, so let's start from the first one, the text, the language model, which is like you'll, you will see Ada, Babbage, Curie and DaVinci. These are the different families of models. DaVinci is being the, uh, the best of the best. It can actually summarize text. It can actually uh, uh, write emails for you. It can actually pull up information. It can do so many different things. Um, now, what it cannot do is like it cannot do that chat type interaction, which is where you come into the next one, next pillar, which is the prompt, uh, where you see the second pillar. This is what is called the chat GPT. Uh, chat GPT difference is like um, it is a version of the GPT-3, uh, but it is designed for conversational type uh, uh, workload, which means it understands very well how um, um, what you're typing and what you're asking, and it is going to react to based on what you're uh, uh, what you're asking it. So it it will understand the context, and this is where there is a reinforcement um, uh, uh, feedback loop that we use for Bing and all, so that you can actually you get better response as you go again and again. Uh, but also for the regular chat GPT, the conversations will be carried, so it can actually respond based on the context what you're talking about. Then comes the third pillar. This is more on the uh, uh, on the coding side where you, we, I can say like, okay, go uh, pull up the order table and I need the uh, sales total for uh, X, uh, XYZ salesperson for the month of October of 2020 to 2022. And it'll actually create the query and it'll create the query for it. So it won't run the model. It'll create the query for it because it's a, it's a language creation tool. The last one is the uh, DALI model. This has the cool factor because this can actually, uh, we can describe a scenario to the model in text and it will go and try to create an image for us. Uh, so these are the models um, as of right now, it's available with us. Um, now you can ask like, what is the difference between uh, what the regular OpenAI and Microsoft is gonna do? Uh, Microsoft's uh, OpenAI will be, uh, a pass service so it can run within your own subscription um number one number two you will get the enterprise gate security with uh, rollbacks access are back and you will also get it with the private vnets and you can put private endpoints and stuff like that we do allow um uh, fine tuning of model um based on uh, individual needs um given the demand um we uh, mo most customers and most use cases, we see that you don't need fine tuning. You can do prompt engineering and build most of your use cases. Worst come worst case, we do have uh, allow customers to do fine tuning of their model as well. Um, we are very big in responsible AI. So anything that is going in the uh, going to the model, the models are exposed as a REST API. So we actually run through an another AI service called content filtering, which actually looks for abuse management. Um, basically, it looks at the abuse. If it is abuse, it will respond to you back as, hey, uh, the model was, the, the content was filtered because abuse got triggered. Now we do also store uh, the data for 30 days, only, only for troubleshooting purposes and abuse management. Nobody else have access to it. Um, these are some of the features that Microsoft does very well. Um, that's why we are actually putting that in that uh, realm of like where the cognitive services is. So we're gonna expose that in that Azure uh, uh, open AI services. Since the models are, uh, uh, the this entire technology is new, um, it's very hard to get a full-fledged system um, in the market to go by. So we are releasing it as an REST API so you guys can integrate it into your existing processes. Uh, it's just an HTTP call. 
um, you, you do have to have a key without key, it won't work. So it is also secured. The next one is the um, um, responsible AI. Since we actually are um, being the leader in the responsible AI space, we are actually documented everything, our transparency, uh, fairness, and the security as in the, in the website as well. Uh, we will continue to do so with more and more uh, as we improve our practices. Uh, we will provide you more tools, processes, governance, and things like that. And everything will be exposed to our customers. Now, the most important thing is like everybody asks me is like, what happened to my data? Your data is your data. Microsoft does not take your data and use it for any of the training. Neither we don't go take your data and give it to OpenAI either. Your data is your data. Fine tuning, we allow you to do. Uh, when you're doing fine tuning, you have to build your prompt and completions and upload the prompt and completions to Azure. And it goes into a managed storage account where we actually save the model and the, uh, and the data. And there is a delete API for you guys to go and delete it at any time you want. Uh, we are also doing all these uh, HIPAA compliance and CSTAR and ISO and things like that. As of right now, um, due to the uh, demand, we only have it in three regions, um, which is uh, West Europe, South Central, and uh, East US. Um, so that is going to be there. Uh, data, again, I'm stressing is again, data is your data. Uh, we are not in the business of taking it and building models out of it, or we are not sending it to open AI. Now, we don't retrain the open AI models. It is open AI, the companies, uh, they are the ones who define like when they're going to retrain, when they're going to come up with new models and such. Okay. That being said, uh, as, as we do with everything, we have what we call the Microsoft Intelligent uh, Data and AI platform. We will integrate it. Like, for example, we have integrated our open AI services with uh, uh, a library called Synapse uh, uh, ML, uh, which is a Spark-based library. So you can actually use our uh, some of the open AI uh, uh, GPT-3 models in your own uh, Spark application. Like if you have large corpus of uh, text data sitting in a data lake and Delta Lake and you want to process it, we allow you to do that as well. Um, that being said, here are some of the use cases that we are seeing. By any means, this is not the end of it. I see this uh, chart growing crazy. Every day I find, I myself find like two, three use cases our customers are doing. The biggest one is going to be on that summarization of text lot of lot of data how do i get the gist of it just instead of reading 200 pages i want just a small paragraph summarization works very good extracting information from these corpus of data can i pull up product information can i find out what are they talking about can i find out the contest behind it what is the sentiment those things can also be done uh, semantic search is something that i see for every customer has this. Um, this is where to improve your search and get you more relevant, accurate results with summarization. This is also part of what the Bing will be doing. And then there are these cool use cases like, you know, poem creation, uh, creating like images for inspiration to design, uh, language translation. Um, GitHub has, an, uh, Copilot has an amazing uh, project called uh, GitHub Lab, um, Copilot Lab actually. It can explain the code for you. It can do code refactoring. This is this is amazing. Next next generation stuff. That's not the limit. This is going to go on, and we are going to add a lot more, lot more as we start seeing how this technology is getting evolved. Now, here is a slide. I will uh, spend a few minutes, um, and I'll, I'll try to talk to you guys about the use cases we are seeing. Um, the most important ones that we see again and again is the call center analytics. Um, this is where uh, you can either uh, use it in the real time once the call is done, take the summarize the content and create follow ups, create action items, uh, create email response email back, uh, and to use personalized uh, um, uh, uh, text for the email uh, for the web pages if you are running an e commerce websites. And then you also have the other side of the call center analytics, which is like you have the uh, already have the corpus ready. You want to go understand more and find out insights from the call log. You can do that as a batch process. Um, and then you have these documents like 10K and uh, and 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 um, quarterly statements, or you have these mortgage statements and uh, mortgage uh, the, the big legal documents and things like that. If you want to summarize it, that is where we see a lot. 
I do see some people using it for social media trends and things like that. But if they're writing a social media trend, any of these use cases, what we prefer is like put a human in front of it um, because it is an extremely amazing uh, a language uh, generator. So it can create content for you, but we want to make sure that the content is the right content. Uh, so put a human in front of it to review. If you're designing an application, design it in such a way that you get the best out of the model and it helps the human to achieve what their potentials are. Code generation, like I said, I see Copilot is going crazy. It's been there for more than a year now. So you can see how, how we are improving there. And it, it has multiple languages. It can write code. It can complete the code. It can do docu documentation. The semantic search is something, if you're familiar with knowledge mining use cases, like information discovery, you have a large corpus of data. You wanted to go to the targeted answer instead of showing you the top 10 list and clicking it through. If you think those use cases, that is where I see a lot of these um, summarization models and embedding concepts and all will help you guys. And to be really get you a better, faster search and, and also get the relevant answer quicker. So it's all about that, right? So I see these use cases happening end to end uh, in call center. I see customer 360 where we do see some customized emails going out based on their preferences. Uh, BPA, I see them a lot. And this use case list is again going uh, and increasing. There are three different type of model, GPD-3, chat GPD, GPD-4. Um, GPD-3 is very good in terms of doing all batch uh, translations and things like that and uh, grabbing insights from the uh, natural language text. Whereas the chat GPT is like when you wanted to put like, uh, you have a large corpus of data, create a semantic search and then put a chat GPT on top of it so you can talk to the chat, talk to your data and find out the insights as you uh, as you need quicker and faster, right? Uh, GPT-4 is a better version of 3.5, which is chat GPT and it is getting better and better. The GPT-4 models have, I've seen that it's providing much more better and nicer results. Uh, this is a simple thing, a simple, uh, I mean, not a simple thing, but it also shows you like how you can um, uh, kind of give some instructions to the model. Uh, we call it prompt engineering. You can specify with some samples and you can ask it like, hey, behave it like this and grab like this, here is a sample. And then you pass in the data it will actually get you the better results. This is why uh, we say you don't need fine tuning. Uh, you don't need to rebuild the uh, re recreate, like go to fine tune and create prompts and then retrain the model. Rather, you can use prompt engineering on the go and then you can actually achieve most of the outcome. Here is a sample architecture, but without ado, I'll just show you a few of the um, uh, samples that we have. Uh, so this is a demo screen. We uh, it's a very simple demo. Uh, it actually shows it uses the DaVinci model, which is the best one. Uh, you pass in a text. You ask it to summarize it. It will actually go summarize it. Um, bear with me because of the um, um, because of uh, constraints. It will be take some time. Same model. I can say like, hey, here are the classifications I wanted to do. Here is the text. I don't know what classification it belongs to. Go classify it. And if I send it to the model, it is going to, um, it's going to figure out what classification and it should say entertainment. Um, so bear with, the, bear with the model. It's going to take some time. Now remember, some of, some, some of, some of these folks usually ask questions are like, no, no, the model has to uh, give me the same answer again and again. Uh, the model has to respond in one second. Um, that and all is not, not in, when you're looking at a uh, artificial generator, uh, so that means it's like a human. I mean, you can, we can give a short answer or we can give a lengthy answer. So it, it takes time to build it. So the model is going, model is creating content. It's not just, pulling up the content and saying like, oh, you know what? I found this or here, same thing again and again. No, it's not. It's going to create the content for you every time that you're going to ask. Um, so as I said, see, it pulled out, it understood and it said entertainment. So these are how you can use your own data set and actually get the desired output that you wanted to get out. Now, this is another sample. Um, this one, I like it a lot because I see a lot of customers having it. Send a corpse of uh, text and say like, hey, I wanted to create a table in like fruit color and flavor. 
uh, like a like a given header and give some 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 dummy samples how the uh, how the data needs to be formatted and then send it into the table i mean send it into the model let the model actually will go it will look at all the text cops and it will start pulling out like po units bright green savory so it will start pulling out your uh, entities inside uh, inside uh, the natural language corpus so you you saw this this got pulled out now by the way this demo is not a can demo uh, this is a real demo uh, as i click the button it is going to the api and it is see you're seeing the uh, the api's output i'm not manipulating anything behind the scenes so you're seeing the vanilla vanilla uh, how the model works so one model can do multiple uh, different things and then you have this chat gpt which is like you can go and say like hey this is the GPT-4. This is where the chatting happens. You can say like, okay, if I'm asking what are the priorities for a CDO, uh, this model is going to take time depending on the questions and how uh, how you are framing the prompt engineering. A model will take some time to think and uh, reproduce the output. Um, that is, if you come and ask me a question, I might have the answer right away, or I might be like, okay, no way, let me think about it and I'll answer you. And that is gonna happen. And that is how these models how these models are gonna behave as well. Now they do understand uh, context. So now I ask the question, so I can say, uh, can you uh, summarize in um, a few lines? Um, and you can actually, I, I didn't specify what content that I wanted to do. Uh, but since the model knows that, oh, Bala was talk, asking about what are the priorities for uh, CDO. So I'm going to uh, take that previous output and I'm going to work with that and I'm going to provide you an output. Okay. Um, this is, this will take some time. Um, so you see it went, I didn't specify about CDO. It understood the context and you can see how the chat uh, history is getting built in here. Uh, this is a process of how OpenAI has built the API. So it actually carries over all these APIs that we have are stateless. So we don't store any state. If you guys want to do state management, or if you want to do like uh, save the prompts and completions for auditing and improving um, prompt engineering and all, that is something that we ask us, we'll help you design a system around it. Now, let's talk about the, so you saw the GPT model. Here is the cool factor. I'm going to say, um, sitting in a beach uh, and watching sunrise. So I'm, ex I'm just giving an explanation, like a, like a description to the model and let the model go create the image. So this is creating the image. Um, so if I ask it again, it will give you a new image. This is not, it. it's still work in progress. It, 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 even though it produces some amazing better images, as you can see, um, this is not an end, end result for you guys. You have to take this and work on and create more. Now, is that it possible? No, this is the base model. Now I'm going to show you uh, what how you can do it with your own data. Like this is a data set that I created and I uploaded. This is a sample website. Uh, we can share you the link. Uh, I I have a data set with uh, um, creating an uh, uh, like a SOW for big data and uh, some some application. So I can say write a SOW for big data project. Um, and this is going to go after a very confined control. Uh, the model uh, understands and it'll give you generic. Um, they should come in a way um so the idea is like, uh, we don't want to get general information because in most cases you want to be able to talk to your own data. So what we did is we are using the embeddings concept and we are also using some of these vector database behind the scenes and we are putting a chat GPT on top of it so it can answer within that confined space. Now, the reason why I'm showing you is like most of you, most of you as a customer, you have your own data set and you wanted to be able to respond within that boundary. And 
And of course, we do that uh, here as well. Um, sorry about that. That is because of uh, the thr throttling that I have. Now, this is on the, um, uh, when it comes, I'll show you guys the result. Uh, we'll come back to it. Um, it might take a little second. And then you have this uh, Bing chat. Bing chat is basically your, um, uh, it's your next generation search. This is where I can say, uh, what are some places, um, places to visit in Las Vegas? Um, and then I can ask a question, I can ask a follow-up question. It will give you targeted answer. It will also tell you where it is pulling the information from it and the citations will come. See, it is creating you the content, what, what I asked for. Um, so this is powered by GPT-4. We call it Bing Chat GPT. Let me see whether this one came through. It's giving me still errors. Um, hopefully, well, hopefully that should come while this is uh, gonna pull up. Now, the Bing is extremely very good if you wanna get uh, uh, the current information out of the search results and get current details on it. Don't use the model for fact checking because a lot of customers, uh, that is where get, they get very panicky. Uh, these are language models. They don't go check facts. Um, they are going to, they are creating content. So some people call it hallucination. Only humans can lie. So I don't know, but that's up to you guys. And it also gives you citations and uh, from the documents that I uploaded. So this is a controlled environment for you guys to do it in your own, own corpus of data. Bing is extremely very good if you want to be that next generation search. I, I have any, um, if I don't know something, I go to Bing and I ask, I get a straight answer. This is the power of uh, AGI that we are seeing and it is going to grow more and more and more. 